second dot point uh, for how does skill acquisition affect performance. Uh, and here we're looking at the characteristics of the learner. So the characteristics of the learner, again, our major goal for this whole critical question is for you to understand the judgment of skill and how the stages of skill acquisition, the characteristics of the learner and the environment impact skill performance. The success criteria to go along with this is for you to evaluate the various methods of judgment and explain the impact of the stages of skill acquisition, the characteristics of the learner and the environment on performance. So here we are looking at just this singular dot point and so we have our smaller sub goals as well for achieving this larger goal. And so our sub goals here are for you to know the characteristics of the learner and for you to understand how these characteristics impact skill acquisition and performance. Uh, your success criteria with these smaller learning goals are for you to describe the characteristics of the learner and for you to explain how the characteristics impact skill acquisition and performance. Now these obviously match up with our learn about and learn to. So the learn about here is the characteristics of the learner and there's plenty of examples that are listed here for you. So there's the personality, hereditary, confidence, prior experience and ability and they're the ones we're going to focus on throughout this uh, video. Your learn to asks you to describe how the characteristics of the learner can influence skill acquisition and the performance of skills. Okay, so here we're looking at the characteristics and how it actually influences skill acquisition. So whatever you're going to get asked in terms of uh, characteristics of learners, it's always going to be linked to the influence on skill acquisition. So, our first one is personality. Now personality is the characteristic way that someone behaves, thinks or feels. Uh, it's just it's what makes the person who they are essentially. Uh, and when I start to talk about the different aspects of personality, you'll start to see straight away how that can actually impact skill acquisition. So for example, one of the characteristics is a good work ethic. And so straight away, if someone is going willing to work hard, you know that that's going to increase uh, the rate at which they acquire the skill. Uh, if they are punctual, if they are positive, if they're constantly coming at that skill, trying to learn it, and really uh, thinking that they can do it and having a positive mind frame, uh, they're more likely to succeed than the person who comes at it with a negative attitude and thinks that they're not going to achieve that skill. Uh, someone who is energetic when they come to the skill, someone who is focused, uh, those kinds of people are going to develop the skill a lot faster than those who are not. Uh, lots of other ones also can be mentioned, so things like determination, enthusiasm, dedication, uh, positive attitudes, cooperation, patience, and a willingness just to try something new. All of those aspects of a personality will really have a positive impact on the rate at which someone acquires that new skill. We then shift to heredity. Heredity is essentially uh, genetics. So we're looking at genetically inherited uh, aspects of the person that come from their parents, uh, including their gender, uh, their race, their muscle type, and their somatotype. So somatotype is your body type. Uh, and within your somatotype, your body type, there are essentially three different ones. So there's the ectomorph, okay, so a tall, skinny person who's more suited to play basketball, volleyball, or netball. So an ectomorph might learn those skills a bit faster uh, and may be able to perform those skills at a higher level simply because of their endomorph style, uh, their body type. A mesomorph is someone who is muscular and toned uh, and might be better suited to a sport such as AFL, rowing or uh, ideally bodybuilding really. Our last uh, somatotype, our last body type is endomorphs. Now endomorphs tend to carry their weight a bit lower, uh, they tend to be a little bit heavier and so they actually really suit sports like rugby league or rugby union where they're a forward, particularly union because union like to have a lower sense of gravity in their forwards. Uh, they might also be really well suited to being a blocker in uh, NFL. So hereditary aspects can really influence the rate at which skills are acquired and the level to which they're acquired. So for example, uh, your genetics would greatly determine uh, the number of type 2 or fast twitch muscle fibres that your body has. And if you have more of those types of fibres, then you're more suited to those activities that involve power and speed and strength. Uh, and so that's why a large number of type 2 fibres helps you uh, to, to perform well in the 100 metre sprint uh, or helps you to perform well in shot put or discus. Now, people can acquire skills very quickly and perform them well while not being suited for a particular sport. So they might be an ectomorph or a mesomorph or an endomorph, 
uh, and choose to play in a sport that they don't uh, particularly, uh, that their body type isn't suited for. For example, an endomorph who decides to do high jump. Now they can do very well at high jump, they can probably jump very high and perform the skill very well, but at the same time they're not going to be able to achieve the same heights uh, as someone who's taller, simply because the taller person uh, is already half up there <laughs> and the shorter person has to get themselves through the air uh, to even get up to the head height of the taller person and so it gives them a disadvantage. Same for things like basketball and netball and volleyball. If you're taller, it allows you to get closer to the basket, it allows you to spike over the net a lot easier and so therefore the shorter person, though they can still do it very well, will not be able to do it at the same level as the person who is better suited to that sport. The next one we move to is confidence. Now anyone who comes into learning a new skill and is confident about it is more likely to uh, develop that skill quickly. Uh, so belief in one's own ability and positively, uh, that's going to positively influence uh, your skill acquisition. Uh, if you have experienced success, then you're going to grow confidence and expect to uh, be successful in the future. And so confidence is actually highly linked with your previous experience. And so prior experience is essentially uh, your transfer of skills from one context to another, allowing the athlete to learn new similar skills faster than people who have not, no prior experience. Okay? Uh, but even someone who has just simply been uh, achieving any kind of movements and success in sports will naturally have that confidence to think that they're going to do well in another sport. Uh, so there's two different types of transfer when it comes to sport. One is lateral transfer, which is transferring from one skill to a skill that is similar. Uh, so an example of that is tackling rugby league to tackling in rugby union. Uh, or running with the ball in rugby league to running with the ball in rugby union. Uh, it can be batting in cricket to batting in baseball. That's not to say that they're exactly the same, but what it's saying is that they're, so, they're quite similar, and so if you are successful in one, that should increase the speed at which you acquire the skill in the other. Uh, the other way of transfer is called vertical transfer. So vertical transfer is when someone has mastered a lower order skill uh, that then enables them to uh, develop the higher order skill faster. Uh, and so a really good example of that is someone who has learnt how to do a jump shot in basketball uh, and does very well at them. For them to then learn how to do a layup uh, is a, a vertical transfer where they already know how to probably dribble the ball and run with the ball. Uh, most people know how to jump and then these people also know how to shoot and now they're going to combine that into a layup which enables them to be more successful and learn that skill faster. The last one is ability. Ability is the ease of performing movements and performances. So for some athletes and for some people, learning new skills just comes quite easily to them. Normally it's those people who are quite into their sports and have lots of prior experience and lots of other things that are influencing their ability. Uh, so a, your ability is characterized by fluid movements that are accurate and have really good execution of the skill. Uh, they're not, greater abilities tend to learn and process new skills faster than people who have lower abilities. And often a combination of all the other characteristics of the athlete influence their abilities. So their genetics, uh, the hereditary stuff, all their, um, their prior experiences, uh, their confidence levels, their personalities all flow into their ability. And so it actually kind of works itself into a whole bunch of other things as well.